Hello friends, we are discussing spectral models for radiative heat transfer. In last few lectures we discussed narrow band and wide band models. In narrow band models we averaged the absorption coefficient and emissivity of a homogeneous cell layer over a small wavelength range comprising of a few lines. In wide band model we averaged over the entire row or vibrational band. Now in today's lecture we will focus on global models. So global models are one of the most preferred models in radiative heat transfer. These models basically represent the entire spectrum in the form of gray gases. So the properties, the spectral mod modeling is done over the entire spectrum and we do not necessarily focus on narrow or wide bands. So the advantage of these models is they are very efficient. We need to solve radiative transfer equation only for few weights, few times and they can be easily integrated with any CFD model because of their very high efficiency. So in this category we have number of models. Here in this lecture we will focus on weighted sum of gray gases WSGG model which has got very much popularity in radiative heat transfer after its development for the zone model. So there are number of global models uh, that are employed in radiative heat transfer. Some of these models are weighted sum of gray gases, spectral line based weighted sum of gray gases, absorption distribution function and K distribution model. So all these models basically have one or the other thing common that we represent gas in the form of fictitious gray gases. So we are basically representing the gas in the form of few fictitious gray gases and we solve radiative transfer equation not for the real gas but rather for these fictitious gray gases. So in the sense uh, all these models, the global models they have very much common that they represent a gray, non gray gas with gray gases and they are the most computational efficient uh, models uh, in radiative heat transfer calculation. Now what we mean by fictitious gray gas, so that point uh, let me make it very clear in the beginning itself before we go into the details. So let us say we have uh, a spectrum of absorption coefficient say and this spectrum basically varies, uh, it may have some rotational band and so on. So what we do is basically we represent this non-gray, of course the absorption coefficient is varying and uh, we represent this as non-gray. So non-gray absorption coefficient is represented in the form of few gray absorption coefficients. So we represented this like this, so this is one gray absorption coefficient. So some, some uh, part of the absorption coefficient is represented by this. Uh, uh, non uh, this uh, gray absorption coefficient, the other may be represented as this. Like this, we may have uh, the what we call uh, another gray gas. Then we may have another gas like this. So what we basically are doing here is the entire spectrum we are dividing into a number of gray gases, each gray gas has constant absorption coefficient over the spectrum. So, uh, so let us see how this basically can be represented. So we have number of uh, gases, this may be one gas and this may be another gas. So these are basically non overlapping gray gases and we are trying to solve the radiative transfer equation or radiation problem for constant absorption coefficient and we have number of gray gases for which we want to solve this problem. And once we have solved the problem for these gray gases, we just add up the results to find out the total flux or total intensity. Now 
we go into the details of weighted sum of Gray Gansey's model. It was developed by Hotel and it was developed in the frame of framework of zone model that we have already discussed. So, for zone model, the weighted sum of Gray Gansey's model was uh, developed, but later on, Modest extended this weighted sum of Gray Gansey's model to general solver for radiative transfer equation. So, in the sense, this model weighted sum of Gray Gansey's can be applied to any RTE solver, be it exact solution, be it spherical harmonics, discrete ordinate method, zone model, any method can be applied along with weighted sum of Gray gas model. So, as I said, we represent the non-gray absorption coefficient by a number of gray gases with constant absorption coefficient. And the crux of this method is that the parameters that we are going to use in weighted sum of gray gases model are either obtained from experiments as was done in the case of wide band and narrow band models also or they may be also obtained from line by line MSCVT data. I will explain how the parameters are obtained and how the model is basically represented. But this method is very powerful and it is one of the most preferred method in radiative transfer solution and the data for this type of uh, uh, model is available in many commercial codes uh, like ANSYS and STAR CCM. So, this model can be applied and uh, effectively it gives very good results. So, how do we represent this model? So, in this model normally we take number of gray gases, typically 4 uh, gray gases are used and out of these 4 gray gases one will be gas which is transparent that means absorption coefficient is 0. So, we will have one transparent gas which will represent the windows between the absorption bands, rho vibrational bands. As we have already seen a gas may have number of rho vibrational bands and the bands have some separation windows which are basically there to transmit any radiation coming from the wall. So, we also in this model represents one transparent window, a transparent gas with absorption coefficient equal to 0 and other than this transparent gas we have 3 more gases. So, total 4 gases are represented and we write emissivity of a gas layer, a homogeneous gas layer. So, we have a homogeneous gas layer this is filled with some non gray gas, but we are going to represent this with a gray gas. So, the emissivity of this layer is basically written as weighted sum of emissivity evaluated at gray absorption coefficient. So, kappa or k i is basically the gray absorption coefficient pressure based gray absorption coefficient p is sum of partial pressures of absorbing gases s is the path length. and k i is the absorption coefficient, gray absorption coefficient. So, we have represented basically this non-gray gas as a mixture of gray gases, total 4 in number, each gray gas has absorption coefficient k i, each gray gas has weights a epsilon i which depends on gas temperature. Now, the main assumption in this method is that absorption coefficient is independent of temperature and gas concentration. So, that means the value of his absorption coefficient is assumed to be constant while the weights are uh, allowed to vary with temperature. So, this is basically uh, uh, very restrictive in the sense when we have two cells for example. So, we have let us say two cell two cells the conditions in one cell is let us say T 1 another cell has a temperature T 2. Now, what we are basically assuming is that whatever the temperature in the two cells is, but the absorption coefficient for the gray gas will be same k i. So, this absorption coefficient will not change, but the weights can change. So, a i will change. So, this will be based on T 1 and this will be based on T 2. So, these weights are allowed to change and what do these weights represents? These weights basically represents the MSC power of the black body. So, they are basically there to represent how much the fraction of black body MSC power. So, because the weights are correctly represented, the model will always go to correct optically thin limit where the kappa value is very large or very small. So, for optically thin limit, 
it will always go, go to correct limit because the weights are correctly represented but the absorption coefficient is assumed to be constant. So, this is one of the restriction. Now, the entire emissivity data, entire coefficients of weight coefficients data is fitted uh, in the form of curve rates. So, the, the fraction of black body MSC power also called weights represented by A subscript epsilon i where epsilon is basically the weights for emissivity and i is the subscript for the gray gas which depends on gas temperature Tg is written as a polynomial fit j is equal to 1 to j is equal to 4 bij where bij are now coefficients uh, they are tabulated coefficients and the temperature Tgi. So, we have basically fitted a polynomial for these weights versus gas temperature. So, weights are allowed to vary with gas temperature using a polynomial fit. Okay. Now, there are total number of 4 gases. So, these fits are basically for I is equal to 1, 2 and 3. So, 3 gray gases. For the transparent gas, now the sum of the weight should always be equal to 1 because black body MSC power is constant and the total amount of emission should be conserved. So, the final weight for I is equal to 0 is calculated based on the equality. So, I is equal to 0, the weight is simply equal to 1 minus I is equal to 1 to 3 A i A epsilon i T g. So, that is uh, this is how we basically conserve the total emission. So, the for the transparent window the weight is basically equal to 1 minus the weights for the other gray gases. Similarly, the method can accommodate cold black walls as well as the method can accommodate gray non black walls. So, if there is a wall emission, so if we have wall emission, now the wall may be at temperature T s, the temperature of the wall may be T s and the gas temperature is T g. So, similar to emissivity, the absorptivity of the cell is also curve fitted. So, we have a cell, the intensity is radiated from this wall and we are looking for what is basically transmitted and absorbed within this cell. So, we write the absorptivity, the absorptivity of the cell is defined as the weight coefficient. Now, which the weight coefficients depends on wall temperature as well as the gas temperature. So, these coefficients are now fitted versus two parameters the gas temperature T g and surface temperature wall temperature T s and 1 minus E minus k i P s where k i is the same absorption coefficient that we have found for the emissivity data. So, k i is same P is the partial pressure of absorbing gases s is the path length. So, the absorptivity as well as emissivity data is fitted and this is fitted from experiments or through line by line calculations. Uh, we will see how these uh, coefficients are calculated. So, the weights in the absorptivity are basically fitted versus T g and T s and the correlation is given by this relation. So, this is double polynomial fit and the coefficient C i j k i is the gray gas, j is the temperature for gas temperature and k is the temperature for the wall temperature. So, the three parameters here i, j and k, i is the gray gas, j is the temperature for the surface uh, sorry the gas and k is for the surface temperature. So, three parameters are there and for these three parameters the coefficient c, i, j, k are basically given in the tabular form and using this coefficients we can calculate the absorptivity and emissivity of the gas and we can basically solve any problem. Now, similar to emissivity data, the uh, absorptivity of the transparent gas is simply equal to 1 minus the summation i is equal to 1 to 3 absorptivity of the 3 gray gases. So, these are this is a table. Now, this table has been prepared for a gas mixture. So, we have a gas mixture. This gas mixture is such that the partial pressure of water vapor. So, we have a mixture of water vapor and carbon dioxide in this and the partial pressure ratio is 1. So, we see that the method is very restrictive in the sense that the data is available for only few partial pressure ratios. As is clear from this table, 
the stable is made or constructed for a typical case where partial pressure of water vapor and partial pressure of carbon dioxide are equal. If these are not equal as you may find in combustion problems then you have to either generate new data or if you use the same data then your results will not be accurate. So, the most fundamental limitation of this method is that the data is available only for some restrictive gas conditions. So, this is the data for emissivity fit. For emissivity fit we have uh, the absorption coefficient which is constant for 3 gray gases the fourth transparent gas i is equal to 0 will have k i is equal to 0 as 0. So, the, the fourth gas is transparent or the 0 gas is transparent with 0 absorption coefficient and the coefficients b i 1, b i 2, b i 3 and b i 4 are used to find out the weights for the emissivity that means a subscript epsilon i. So, the weights in the emissivity data are used to uh, are fitted basically based on the gas temperature and the coefficients are given in this table. Similarly, the coefficients are also given for absorptivity data. So, these are parameters for absorptivity fit for parameter c i j k where i is the gray gas. So, we have total 3 gray gases 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and we have uh, what we called 3 coefficients, 4 coefficients for the gas temperature and we have 4 for the surface temperature. So, based on these uh, fit we can calculate the absorptivity data and calculate heat transfer from a homogeneous cell. So, so far we have limited our understanding of WSGG uh, method to homogeneous cell having same gas conditions uniform temperature we will extend this method to non homogeneous problems also. So, again I will summarize what are the limitations of this method. So, the limitations are that the weight is allowed to vary with temperature. So, A epsilon i as well as the weights for absorptivity the weights for the absorptivity A alpha i they are allowed to vary with temperature. So, these are allowed to vary with temperature the emissivity weight varies with gas temperature and absorptivity weights varies, varies with gas as well as surface temperature. However, the absorption coefficient is assumed to be constant. So, if we have change in gas condition then this condition cannot be accommodated. If we have a different temperature in the gas, so absorption coefficient is not going to change. So, whatever is the temperature in the gas cell the absorption coefficient is same. So, this is one of the limitations it is independent of temp temperature. So, absorption coefficient k i is independent of temperature. So, whatever the cell the whatever the temperature of the gas absorption coefficient is same which of course, is not true if the temperature changes we under we know that the temp absorption coefficient is going to change, but this model assumes that the absorption coefficient does not change with temperature. How the parameters are obtained the parameters are not obtained from any model as such the parameters are not obtained from any line by line calculations although the new versions of weighted sum of gray gases do contain weights based on line by line calculations, but the original weighted sum of gray gas model contained parameters which were based on emissivity data. And I will explain this uh, what is basically the emissivity data. So, the original weights a epsilon i a alpha i were fitted to emissivity data and they were not fitted to actual line by line calculations or absorption coefficient. The third limitation is that the data is available only for CO2 and H2O mixtures, CO2, H2O and sometimes soot also for this limited partial pressure either the partial pressure of H2O versus CO2 should be 1 or it should be 2. While in actual application the partial pressure can be anything it can be 1, it can be 2, it can be greater than 2. So, for those applications where the partial pressure ratio is not 1 or 2 we do not have any data. So, that is the other limitation of this model. Now, how do we evaluate these parameters? So, as I said in the original weighted sum of gray gas model the parameters the weight parameters the absorption coefficient parameters. So, a epsilon i k i 
and A alpha i. So, how these parameters were evaluated? So, lot of researchers have calculated this parameter, but what approach did they use? If you understand that, we will be able to appreciate the limitation of this method very well. So, what basically these researchers do? They took a homogeneous cell, they took this homogeneous cell and this cell, the dimension of this cell they varied from few centimeter to few hundred centimeter. So, they change the length of this cell, they change the temperature inside the cell, they change the pressure inside the cell. So, the gas condition they changed and they calculated the emissivity epsilon. Now, this emissivity they might have obtained sometimes through experiments. So, original weighted sum of gray gases model fitted the experimental data. So, they obtained emissivity of gas mixtures. Now, this emissivity data is available in literature. Lot of researchers have done experiments and calculated the emissivity of a homogeneous gas layer under varying conditions. So, many researchers fitted that emissivity data using minimization of Leeds square error and evaluated these coefficients. Later on, the researchers calculated this emissivity from line by line data or narrow band data and based on this emissivity calculated from line by line data, they evaluated these parameters A epsilon i k i and A l phi. So, the point is that it is basically a curve fit in such a form that we are minimizing the least square error. We have calculated the emissivity based on line by line calculation or experiments and we calculate the emissivity from our curve fit based on the coefficient that we want to determine A epsilon i, A alpha i and k i and when we have minimum error, minimum least square error, those parameters of the model we accept and this form the parameters of weighted sum of gray gases model is obtained. So, of course, there is a limitation because the, the actual value of path length, actual value of absorption coefficient, actual value of pressure and temperature is not input to the problem. The only thing that is input to the problem is a curve fit which basically minimizes the least square error. So, actual problem may have some larger error as compared to this uh, uh, minimization of least square error. So, in actual practice the weighted sum of gray gas model may not give you accurate results and we will see the accuracy of this method when we solve one problem. Number of enhancements, number of advancements have been done because the method has enjoyed very popularity. So, number of modifications have been proposed uh, in weighted sum of gray gases model. It can be applied to reflecting walls. Now, the data or the parameters of weighted sum of gray gases model are calculated based on line by line spectral data rather than experimental fitting. Also, now the method can be applied to non-homogeneous gas also using scaling approximation. So, for example, if we have two gases, we know that the absorption coefficient in this method has been assumed to not depend on temperature. That is an assumption in weighted sum of gray gases that absorption coefficient does not depend on temperature. But what, if, what will happen if the gas concentration is different? Let us say the gas concentration is phi in this cell and gas concentration is phi naught in this cell, then how do we relate absorption coefficient? So, for this what we call scaling approximation has been proposed. What scaling approximation does is that absorption coefficient in any gas condition phi is simply dependent on absorption coefficient at reference gas condition phi naught times a factor u which is where u is called scaling function. So, based on this we can scale the absorption coefficient. So, the u can be just simply equal to the partial pressure also, it could be partial pressure p by p naught or any function can be taken. If we take u is equal to 1, then we are just saying that absorption coefficient is constant throughout. So, scaling approximation is used in large number of uh, problems and it enjoys uh, good success. So, before we solve any problem, let us see how the RTE basically is reduced for this method. So, we know that radiative transfer equation in spectral space is given by d i lambda by d s is equal to kappa lambda i b lambda minus i lambda. Okay. So, when we applied weighted sum of gray gas model, 
the spectral model based on weighted sum of gray gases what we are assuming is that absorption coefficient is replaced by a gray gas. So, this is 1 RTE. Now, we have split this into 4 RTEs where we have 1, 2, 3 as gray gases and the fourth one is basically a transparent gas where kappa is 0. Okay. So, for each gas each gray gas we can write the RTE as d i k by d s is equal to kappa k kappa k is basically the gray gas absorption coefficient a k is the weight uh, weight of the weighted sum of gray gas model i b is integrated black body intensity minus kappa k i k. So, in the sense so what does weight represents here? So, weight basically represents fraction of black body emissive power or black body intensity. How much each gray gas carries energy with it. So, that is basically the use of weight in weighted sum of gray gases model. It basically defines how much energy is emitted by each gray gas. Once we have the intensity, once we have the solution for single RTE, the total intensity is just a sum of individual intensities k is equal to 0 to k and k in this case is nothing but 4, uh, 0 it will be uh, rather 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 where 0 is the transparent gas and 1, 2, 3 are the gray gases. So, we need to solve RTEs individually for each gray gas and then we just add the results and it gives reasonably good accuracy when we uh, see this uh, example. So, let us do one problem. In this problem we are considering an isothermal slab we have an isothermal slab at temperature is 1000 Kelvin. Okay. The total pressure is 1 atmosphere. Now, we have a mixture in this gas, a gas mixture 70 percent nitrogen, 20 percent water vapor and 10 percent carbon dioxide in this. The cell is bounded by cold and black walls. So, the walls are cold, so they do not emit any radiation. So, we do not have to worry about how much energy is emitted from the walls because they are cold and they are black. So, they do not reflect. So, the walls do not emit, they do not reflect. So, the walls are basically as good as not there. So, we have to find out the heat loss from the cell assuming the thickness of the cell L is 1 meter. The coefficients for this uh, weighted sum of gray gas model has been given. We have 4 gray gases, 1 transparent gas, with kappa is equal to 0. So, 1 transparent gas is there and then 3 uh, gray gases with coefficients kappa 1.267 meter inverse, kappa 2 4.65 meter inverse and kappa 3 71.7 meter inverse. So, we have to find, find out the amount of heat flux from this cell. So, let us solve this problem. Uh, we will use, uh, we can use any uh, RTE solver for this uh, one dimensional plane parallel slab, we have discussed many methods. Uh, I will use uh, the exact solution. So, exact solution for this method, the exact solution for this method for the heat flux, non dimensional heat flux psi is uh, given by Q upon sigma T4. Now, we can do it for a single gray gas q i where i is the gray gas coefficient and this will be multiplied by 1 minus 2 E 3 kappa i L and this will be multiplied by a weight coefficient A i. So, this is the non dimensional radiative heat flux coming out of the cell using the exact method for a single gray gas. If we have number of gray gases that is 4 in total, it will be just sum i is equal to 1 to 4 or i is equal to 0 to 3 whatever, it is just the notation thing and this will be equal to summation i is equal to 1 to 4 
or rather take i is equal to uh, 0 to 3, we can it's just the notation thing. So, 0 to 3 and this will be equal to a i 1 minus 2 e 3, e 3 is the exponential integral of order 3, we have discussed this k i l. So, this is the non dimensional heat flux. Now, all we have to do is we have to evaluate this exponential integral and just add the terms uh, together. So, psi is equal to the coefficients are already given in the table. So, we will just substitute these coefficients psi is equal to 0 0.466 where 0 0.466 is the value of weight coefficient a 0 1 minus 2 e 3 0 because k is 0 for i is equal to 0 plus the second coefficient which is equal to 0 0.337 1 minus 2 e 3 0 0.267 the length is equal to 1 meters plus 0 0.159 1 minus 2 e 3 4.65 plus 0 0.038 1 minus 2 e 3 71.7. So, we have substituted and expanded the summation and put it the weights of uh, each gray gas. So, we have total 4 gray gases and we have contrib we have added the contribution from all the gray gases. Now, e 3 0 is simply equal to 0 0.5. So, 2 times e 3 0 is 1. So, 1 minus 1 will be 0. So, the first term basically turns out to be 0 and it makes sense because for optically transparent window where absorption coefficient is 0, the gas will not emit any radiation because the absorption coefficient is 0, gas does not emit any radiation, it does not contribute to any heat flux. So, that is uh, uh, that makes sense. S similarly, exponential integral of 71.7 which is now very large optically thick case is approximately equal to 0. So, simplifying this we get psi is equal to 0 0.337 1 minus 2 into in the exponential integral value can be look, looked into the tables given in the textbook 0 0.324 plus 0 0.159 1 minus 2 into 0 0.0 0 1 and this value comes out to be 0 0.1186 plus 0 0.1587 and uh, definitely the third term I forgot to add, add here 0 0.038 plus 0 0.038. So, the total value of the heat flux psi is nothing but 0 0.3152. So, this is the non dimensional heat flux, actual heat flux is nothing but Q is equal to 0 0.3152 into sigma T power 4, where T is 1000 Kelvin. So, you can calculate the heat flux coming out of this cell using weighted sum of gray gases. So, as is clear, this method is very easy to implement. All you have to do is you apply whatever radiative transfer equation solver you are using to a gray gas and then just add the contribution of the gray gases uh, together. Uh, this is uh, a plot uh, that demonstrates the accuracy of this method. We have a, a solution from spherical harmonics method P1 also given here and we are comparing the accuracy of the method using weighted sum of gray gases and line by line method. So, these two methods we need to compare as we see here uh, these two methods this is the exact solution and the square dots are basically the solution. Uh, so, this is the weighted sum of gray gases and the square dots are basically the exact line by line and we see that for small path lens that is optically thin case weighted sum of gray gas model goes to correct limit because there is very less self absorption. The inaccuracies in the weighted sum of gray gases model arise from the assumption that absorption coefficient is constant.
absorption coefficient does not depend on temperature. So, that is the limitation of the weighted sum of gas model, but since for optically thin case very small value of kappa or L it does not matter what is the magnitude of absorption coefficient because the absorption is small in any way the weighted sum of gray gas model goes to correct limit. So, we see good accuracy in this range. However, when self absorption is important when the cell thickness is large when kappa is large the weighted sum of gray gas model gives inaccuracy uh, and we see that there is roughly 10 percent error here in this range. So, so in this uh, lecture we focused on uh, the global model weighted sum of gray gas model which is very powerful method, method and very popular in solving radiation problems in combustion and lot of correlations have been developed although these correlations have been developed for typical combustion of methane and some organic fuel but a few researchers have extended these correlations to uh, some other uh, non conventional fuels as well so the limitation with this method is that we assume absorption coefficient to be uniform and the parameters are available only for certain cases other than that the method gives good accuracy in the next lecture we will focus on k distribution model which is basically one of the most advanced model in this category of global models so thank you